Well, good morning. We think we have batteries and all the things that need batteries. We are present where we need to be present. We're ready to go for those who are not taking a last long weekend of the summer uh, and are doing this live. Welcome. Those of you who are doing that long weekend of the summer, maybe it's Tuesday for you and you're getting around to watching our recording. Greetings to you as well, because it doesn't matter uh, when we are together or how we're together. It matters that we're together. That is what being church is. And today we're going to talk about the work of church for Labor Day. It's, we're going to get to that point. And we're going to celebrate uh, Holy Communion together. So hopefully if you're in the room, you either brought some elements from home or you picked them up or you make sure you get them before we get to that point. If you're at home, uh, you might want to run to the kitchen and get them. If you forgot, there's still time, and uh, we will celebrate together in a little while. But we do remember that we're not alone, that there are people out there who are on the other side of the camera, and maybe at a different time. And our numbers this week are holding pretty steady. We, the YouTube number is the same. The Facebook number is up a little to 401. So a simple reminder that there's reach. And there's more reach if we spread it. So that's, that's the encouragement. And we don't need any encouragement to do the reach to those who have needs. I don't have an updated number. I know it is updated. I know it is larger than that because uh, the essentials closet was active this week. I just don't have that number. So it'll bump up later. But a reminder that we are committed to telling people the good news and showing them that we live it in our actions. And so we remind ourselves with our mission statement as we enter into our worship. Seeking to walk in the way of Jesus, we are an open and affirming church, faithfully using who we are and what we have to serve those on the margins of our community. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. To God, rhythm and blues, country, rap, for we hear the voice of God. 
I relieved your shoulder of the burden, and your hands were freed from the basket. Raise a tune, reggae, techno, rock, gospel. I relieved your shoulder of the burden, and your hands were freed from the basket. Pick up the tambourine and the bass guitar. I relieved your shoulder of the burden, and your hands were freed from the basket. For this was Exodus, a day to release those worked unjustly and bring them to a new safe place. And this is a new Exodus, a day for domestic workers, for migrant workers, for prep cooks in the food industry, for housekeepers in motels, for garment workers, trafficked workers, for workers with mandatory overtime, for workers of three jobs, no benefits, for workers in dangerous conditions. We hear the voice of God. I will give you finest wheat from the rock. I give you honey. And we sing it, bread, and roses. The union forever defending our rights Down with the black leg all workers unite With our brothers and our sisters Together we will stand there Is power in a
The scripture this morning is from the Inclusive, inclusive Bible, uh, from Genesis 3rd chapter, the 8th through the 24th verse. When they heard the sound of Yahweh walking in the garden in the cool of the evening, the man and the woman hid from Yahweh's presence among the trees of the garden. Yahweh called to the man, where are you? I heard you walking in the garden, replied the man. I was afraid because I was naked and I hid. Who told you of nakedness? Have you eaten from the tree whose fruit I forbade you to eat? The man replied, it was the woman you put beside me. She gave me the fruit and I ate it. Then Yahweh asked the woman, what is this that you have done? The woman replied, The snake tempted me, so I ate. Then Yahweh said to the snake, Because you have done this, you are accursed, lower than the cattle, lower than the wild beasts. You will crawl on your be belly and eat dust every day of your life. I will make you enemies of one another, you and the woman, your offspring and hers, her offspring will wound you on the head and you will wound hers in the heel. To the woman God said, I will greatly multiply your pains in childbearing. You will bear your children in pain. You will desire union with your man, but he will be bent on subjugating you. To the man God said, because you listened to your woman and have eaten from the tree which I forbade you, when I said you are not to eat from it, the earth will be cursed because of you. With painstaking labor, you will eat of it all the days of your life. It will yield fawns and thistles when you try to eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat bread until you return to the earth, just as you were taken from it. You are dust, and to dust you will return. Adam, or humanity, named the woman Eve a life giver, because she became the mother of all the living. Yahweh made clothes of animal skins for the woman and the man to wear. Then Yahweh said, look, these humans have become like one of us, knowing both good and evil. They must not be allowed to take in their hands the fruit from the tree of life as well, or they will eat of it and live forever. So Yahweh drove them from the Garden of Eden and sent them to till the soil from which they had been taken. Once they were banished, Wing sphinxes with fiery, ever-turning swords were placed at the entrance to the Garden of Eden to guide the way to the Tree of Life. This ends the reading. Sit on his lap in that big golden steer as we drove through town. He tossed my hair and he said, Son, take a good look around. This is your hometown. This is your hometown. Your hometown. This is your hometown And 65 
tension was running high at my high school There were lots of fights between black and white And there was nothing you could do To cause that light on a Saturday night In a backseat there was a gun Words were passed, a shock on blast Troubled times had come to my hometown To my hometown To my hometown To my hometown, to my hometown. Now streets whitewash windows and vacant stores seems like there ain't nobody wants to come down here no more the closing down the textile mill across the railroad tracks the foreman says these jobs are going boys and ain't coming back to your hometown your hometown to your hometown to your hometown last night me and Kate we laid in bed talking about getting out Packing up our bags, maybe heading south. I'm 35, got a boy of our own. Last night I sat him up behind the wheel and said, Son, look around. This is your own. Well, I suppose I don't need to let you all know that the scripture reading was not written by Adam and Eve. Right? But why do we read it that way? Right? Why do we read it like it's a first-hand account, it had to have happened this way, there has to have been a talking snake, you know? You know it wasn't an apple, it was just a fruit. Why did why, we just think it's an apple, you know? Um, we, we have a problem when we read scripture in a prescriptive manner. Like it's telling us what has to be and always will be. As opposed to sometimes reading it, like I think we ought to read here, in a descriptive manner. This is a story. A story that may have happened this way. It likely didn't. <laughs> but that doesn't make it untrue. It's a true story about how humans are. Right? We could write this. If this had never been written, we could write this story today, couldn't we? Or, or maybe not, because none of us ever blame someone else for our problems, right? <laughs> it was the woman. I, you know, no. at, Adam, Adam is clever because he not only blames the woman, he blames God for giving him the woman. <laughs> Adam will take none of it. It's like, it wasn't my fault at all, right? We know that. We laugh because it's true about us. This is who we are. That's why the story is here. That's why the story is true. Because we're good at blaming one another. And the curses are not necessarily ne needed to be read as God punishing us for disobedience. Yeah, that's part of the story. I, 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 won't, I won't sugarcoat that. We, we're disobedient. We're told... You know, you can have everything but not that. What's the thing we want? 
that, right? That, again, it's in our nature. But it's in our nature because we did the, get the thing that we desired, the knowledge of good and evil, right? Think about the story that way. What if the other thing had happened? They had said, yes, God, we will never eat of that fruit. And then what? Adam and Eve are all we have and we live forever in the Garden of Eden? End of story. I don't know if that's what we'd want, but it's certainly not what we got. And that's why the story is written after the fact about who we are, about why we act the way we are. And this labor thing that we look at, whether it's labor in the field or labor in childbirth or labor of Labor Day weekend. Is it a curse? Is it really a curse? Well, it can be, right? I'm sure that uh, many a morning in your working career, you've not wanted to get up and go to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks, David. That's, that's <laughs> make us feel good. You're, you're, you're begrudgingly here. Uh, <laughs> but there are those days, aren't there? And there is that work that is so satisfying that you know you're doing the right thing. It's like, it's like uh, the sweet spot in a tennis serve, right? When, when, when you meet the ball just right, the, the maximum amount of energy is transferred from the swing to the, to the ball, and, and you don't get any feeling that, that you even struck the ball. It's just perfect, right? The sweet spot. It's, it's a baseball bat. Anything has, has that potential, right? What if our lives of work, the labor that is a curse, felt like that? Surely it has for all of us at some point, right? Don't we all seek after that? The difference between a vocation and an occupation. Right? A vocation is your calling. You know it's the thing that you are to do. An occupation is the thing that occupies your time. It's what pays the bills. And your occupation may also be your vocation if you're fortunate. Right? We think clergy is one of those situations where, uh, yeah... <laughs> I saw, I saw that eye roll. Uh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's supposed to be, right? We call it a vocation because the understanding it's a calling. That doesn't make it not work. But it does mean that there are times when you say, I know why I'm doing this, and it matters, right? And I pray that's true for all of us. That's why some of us have avocations, the thing that brings us pleasure that's not our vocation, <laughs> right? The thing, the hobby, the thing on the side. But all of it is how we're designed. Is it hard to get food out of the soil? Yeah, it doesn't just happen, does it? <laughs> but that doesn't stop people from gardening. Gardening for pleasure. I know some of you do it. In fact, I'm a little surprised there's not, you know, a pile of, of zucchinis to have to get through <laughs> at the door today. <laughs> but, but, you know, and, and that's something I don't quite understand. I, I'm fully happy to let other people grow the food because I know it's hard. I will eat it, thank you, but, you know, you grow it. That's great. And childbirth. It's not an excuse we call it labor, right? It is excruciatingly difficult and painful. And you'd kind of hope that it wouldn't be that way. You can understand the motivation for putting it in this story. Because if you think about... God who could do anything, making childbirth a little easier might be one of the things you'd ask God to do, right? <laughs> but that hasn't stopped us from having children. I mean, why would it? Because the gift is so great. And so this story makes sense of that. That work is difficult. But if you're understanding what it is you're supposed to do, if you hear the call of God and answer. Well, then work is worth it. The value is extraordinary. I was thinking about labor being birthing in relation to Labor Day because we probably need to expand what we think of as labor on Labor Day. I think I read a statistic this week that, that blue-collar work is only like 13% of employment right now. Um, but if 
labor and the labor movement is all considered blue collar, then it's a very small group. What about the rest of the population who are also working in white collar jobs and other industries and things that are still labor, right? And what about birth, which in itself is labor? Maybe we need to think about all of that big picture and then think about church. What does it mean to birth a church? Is a church an occupation? Is it cursed labor? Is doing that work all of that? You know, I've spent a career in church work and a lot of times the answer is absolutely yes. Does it need to be? No. Should it be? No. Can church, being church, be the labor of birth, giving life to whatever it is that you give life to? Because how many of you have complete control of your children? They've always done everything you said. Oh, really? Yeah, that's, we'll move over here because the lightning is going to strike our pianist for lying. Though you do have well-behaved children, I've met them. That's yeah. you know they they for the most part right. <laughs> they their, uh, <laughs> but that's true of church as well. When we gather, when we are called together as God's people, all we have to offer is our own contribution, and let God prepare the feast, do the work, and we're out. And that's out of our control. And that's okay. It's when we try to take it into our control, when we try to say this is how it should be, when we say that we're reading scripture and it has to be exactly the way it's written here, literally. Well, by the time you get to the scripture we read this morning, you've got problems. <laughs> because the world's already been created and now it hasn't rained and things, aren't, things grow before it was raining and there's, there are day and night, but there's no sun and moon and, you know, Putting it together just in the first couple of chapters of the Bible is really hard work. So maybe we should step back and say, God, what are you saying to us? Maybe we should really embrace what we say that our God is still speaking. And that our job is to give birth to a gathering that listens and gets its direction from on high or even better yet, from within. Listening to the Spirit of God, giving birth again and again, anew every day. That's the labor that we're called to. And if we do that, we will find our sweet spot. We will find what it is that we are called to be that brings us most fully alive. Because this story and all the story of Scripture is about life and coming alive. So let's avoid seeing labor as cursed and appreciate the blessing that it is. Amen. And let us turn to God with our prayers, our joys, and our concerns. So I will uh, receive those now. I don't have any in writing here. Um, and we'll begin then with those online. If um, you can use the chat feature, you want to make sure that we get it in our weekly newsletter. We'll add it that way. But you can also unmute yourself and share it. Are there anyone? Uh, is anyone online? I would like to. Yes. Can you, can you hear me? Yes. Sounds I would like bad. to. I would like to give thanks for the the wonderful volunteers, the Stone Soup Cafe that makes Stone Soup Cafe possible since we opened April 4th through the end of August, we have served over 1600 meals. And we have um, also, because we have a ministry within a ministry, Reverend Finland and I have also responded to the needs of people who've walked in or been sent to us by different agencies. And we, through our advocacy, we have prevented some evictions and turned on many lights and provided other services. So I'm very grateful for the opportunity to have this ministry, but this ministry could not exist without the, the hard labor, because running a kitchen is hard labor of the people 
who come to help us. I give great thanks for that. This is our prayer. Anyone else online? Prayers for the hungry and the homeless. This is our prayer. And also um, joy that my cousin Heather, who and her husband Lee, who live in New Orleans, um, Heather gave birth to um, a baby girl, Casey Grace, on August 24th. This is our prayer. Anyone else? How about in the room? We could bring the microphone to you. Sure. I would like to pray for my Nancy, who has a decision to make about her heart. And uh, I am uh, praying that she will do the right thing. This is our prayer. This is our prayer. Any others? Oh. Prayers for Helen Jose and Natalie Stevens and any of the others who are suffering for health problems. This is our prayer. And I have a joy. My great grandson finally put in an appearance two weeks late. <laughs> Everybody's healthy and happy. <laughs> this, is this is our prayer. prayer. This is our prayer. Well, let us enjoy some silence during which we might open ourselves up even more fully to our God so that we might commune with God knowing that God has heard our prayers, even the unspoken ones, and is not only already at work responding, but very likely has plans for how to include us. So let us turn to our God in silence. O oh God, that we could be still and fed and cared for and at peace and rest in the garden. But the noise of the world, the pains in our bodies, the worries in our minds remind us that we have chosen that we've chosen the path of labor, the path of work, because we choose to know right and wrong. And of course, knowing wrong, we're tempted by it. So remind us of our relationship to you, how it might once again be like it was in the garden naked and unafraid, wholly known, wholly loved. Remind us that we are the ones who have walked away from that, not you. And we offer to you our full selves this day, filled with joy at birth, filled with concern for loved ones, and ready to be called to follow, offering you even our exhaustion, 
and what labor we can and the gifts that you have bestowed upon us already. Use us. Knit us together. Birth your church, your kingdom. We pray that it will come even as it was proclaimed by your Son, our Savior, when he walked this earth and left for us words of a prayer that remind us of that and bind us together this day as we pray it, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Before we come to the table, we need to bring our gifts. That's how it works. <laughs> and not simply the gifts of our treasure, 
but also of our time and of our talent. And so do please pause to visit the website and make your donation or be sure to put your gift in the plate if you're here. But most especially be sure to offer the gift of yourself. Bring yourself fully to this time of common unity with one another and with our God. And so we bless all the gifts and in particular the gifts of the elements, the food and the drink that we will share. So together let us pray. There we go. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Open our hearts in and through this act, stripping away any excuse or fearful hesitation so that we will open our doors to the world as the body of Christ redeemed by love. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at the heavenly banquet. Amen. The story we remember is of Jesus being present with his friends in truth. Remember that he names what his friends will do, betray and deny him and run away. And yet he gathers, speaking the truth in love, inviting them all to the table inviting all of us to the table. And we must remember that the table is not just for us, but is also for those whom we would exclude, those whom we might ignore. It's for all. And so, let us be thoughtful as we remember the gifts, as we remember the blessed and broken body of Christ, that he would willingly give himself up so that we might know the depth, the length of God's love for each and every one of us. And remember that in the cup, he said there was a new covenant of forgiveness. That regardless of what you've done, how you see the world, what you've done to others, what you've done to yourself, how long you might have strayed away from the joy and the love of comfort of God, you are still welcome and you are forgiven. The flaming swords and the protection at the garden was to keep us from returning and continuing to eat and live forever. Death is as much a blessing as it is a curse because all of our wrongs, all of our disobedience and missteps and mistakes don't last forever. There's a limit. And in this life, we don't even have to bear the burden of the guilt that is associated with that because Christ says and demonstrates that we are indeed forgiven. And so with that in our hearts, let us place in our bodies these gifts of God, for they are for the people of God. Let us come to the feast.
and filled with these gifts, we are filled with joy and are grateful. And so let us lift our voices together in our prayer of thanksgiving. Thank you, bounteous creator, for feeding us today, both body and soul. Thank you for continuing to feed us at your table, where all are welcome. Thank you for filling us with joy, as well as the hunger for justice, that we may rush to you, the source of all good gifts, to provide what we need for our journey. So a couple of announcements. We are uh, fast approaching the installation, which I hope will be a wonderful time of celebration. Uh, um, even if nobody shows up, we can have a good time, right? <laughs> because we have much to celebrate, and it's, uh, we're, we're a little overdue for a party, right? So let's, let's enjoy that. So if you, um, if you uh, haven't already been approached by uh, someone coordinating, and I know Regina's got her tablet. Um, um, see her. <laughs> we'll get you signed up. You can participate. Um, but certainly show up and, and share, share the news. It will be a hybrid service. If you're coming, we're expecting, actually I'll put mine back on, we're expecting masks and vaccinations and all as we have been. Um, but it'll also be easy for folks to come from afar because it'll be online as well. So... Uh, if you know anybody who wants to participate that way, let them know. The, the uh, invitation is there in our, uh, with the links and stuff in our weekly newsletter. It's also on Facebook. There are ways to share it. If you have any you know, tech issues, ask me. We'll get, we'll get people online so we could do that. Um, our preacher is a friend of mine who uh, some of you will know if you've participated. I've, we've used some material from Darkwood Brew in the past, some videos and things like that. Uh, he is the one who originated that, and that's how I met Eric Elness, was through Darkwood Brew. We were two-dimensional friends before we were ever three-dimensional friends. <laughs> and uh, So it's appropriate now that he is in uh, that other Portland, you know, the one that's three hours away. Yeah, they have to, Portland 2.0, right? Or, yeah, I don't know, the, the new release. Anyway, he's out there. So, uh, so he will be joining us through technology, uh, either live or recorded based on what his schedule ends up being around that time. But I, I look forward to the words he'll bring that day. And so uh, that's coming up. And uh, then we have our new series coming up starting next week. Uh, and actually, there will be some resources from Darkwood Brew uh, that, that we could use in relationship to that, which is what I remembered that I forgot to ask last week. I knew there was something in the announcements. I didn't write it down. I wrote it down for me this week. And that is, we had talked about uh, renewing our weekly gatherings on Zoom uh, in relation to, well, it doesn't have to be in relation to the series. It could be any number of things. And so that's my question. If, if you've been a part of that or want to be a part of that, joining us on Zoom, we'll probably say Thursday evenings because that's what worked. <laughs> we can keep with that. We can change it if it works better for people at other times. Um, we could, on the Thursday following the message, look at the video that uh, was produced for Darkwood Brew around that. And, and it comes with discussion questions. So that's one thing we could do. We could... Uh, read a book together and have conversations that way. Uh, one suggestion was that uh, we look at a book about climate change, which the name I forget, but it's a series of essays put together by a couple of clergy. Uh, Kathy suggested it, I just forget the title, but it's, <laughs> but if we wanted to do climate change, we could do that for, for a while. Uh, or I did eventually find the materials for the uh, racism class that uh, the UCC put together. Uh, it wasn't, it was hidden on the website or wasn't even there or whatever when we talked about doing it. Now I find that it's available. So those are kind of three options on the series, on climate change or on racism. Well, there's a fourth or anything else you might come up with. I'm not going to limit it, but I figure if I give you three choices, tell me what you want to do. You know, those who are interested, if you let me know, we could start that up or, or not, or it's something totally other, but that's, that's uh, putting that out there for, for that. Are there other announcements? There could be some courses starting next week. People can still register for if they want to. 
courses or a course or what? Uh, yes. Oh, actually, I just remembered it. Um, so there are two MISOM courses that are starting soon. One start. I, they might both be starting next Saturday, um, but they have different frequencies and lengths of meeting. Uh, one is a part two of ministry and mental health. You don't have to have taken part one. Uh, and the other is, I believe the title is something like Christian ethics in the 21st century, something like that. Uh, and the registration is still open for both. So if anybody's interested in taking a Maine School of Ministry class, you can go to the Maine UCC conference website and you'll find the links there. Excellent. Thank you. Anything else? Well, then I send you forth with a blessing and a charge. Do the work. Do your work. Do what you're called to do. Because if you do, the very thing that God has made you to be, do the thing God has instilled in you to do, well then, you will give glory to God. You will preach with your life, no words necessary. And that will spread the good news, and that will build the kingdom of God, and that will birth the church. And so, live your life that way this week and every week so that you might give glory to God, the creator, our creator God who knows even the sparrow that falls. May this God lift you on gentle breezes that you might soar with eagles and bless you with the gift of wisdom and insight and give glory to the Christ who walks beside you, challenging you in many forms, the form of the least, the last, the lost, May Christ bless you with a gift of tears, tears that you shed with those who weep out of suffering and out of joy, and give glory to God's wild, untamed spirit. May God's holy wild goose spirit lead you into places that you may not go without the chase, and bless you with a touch of foolish wisdom that you would know that you were made for this and that you are gifted and loved by your God and there is a plan if you just follow. And may the love of God be with you all and all those whom you love and all those whom none but God loves now and until that day of God's judgment when justice will roll down like waters and peace will blossom among all the peoples. Amen.